Okay, so that right diet, what's there? Well, chicken, there's no fiber. Fish, there's no fiber. Dairy, cheese, milk, there's no fiber. Eggs, there's no fiber. Whenever you have any of that stuff, you've got to have a lot of fiber. Where's fiber plant? Where's fiber coming from? Fiber is always in plants. It's the structural integrity of the plant. Like what's holding up lettuce? What's holding up kale? What's holding up spinach? It's the fiber. So fiber is a really big part of plant-based diet. And this is why like, okay, I like fruit. I've got a bunch of fruits here. There's some oranges, right? And I love having oranges and oranges, one of my favorite trees to grow. Unfortunately, here in Texas with the snowpocalypse that we had this winter, we lost all the citrus dead. Boom. Didn't make it unbelievable in the backyard. Old grapefruit tree, goner. Old lemon tree, gone. So we got wiped out in that snow apocalypse. It's really a bummer. Um, but I will get back to growing citrus yet again. So you got to pick your favorites and the fruits for sure. But you can't just live on fruit. Too much sugar, not enough fiber, right, to move some of the other stuff through. And this right here, yes, it's wonderful, but it's an ego expression of the plant. So people who eat a lot of fruit tend to become egoic. Just a little extra little thing on that. It's good in a certain amount. Let's say somebody doesn't have a strong enough ego. They don't have enough strong enough eye identification. They don't have enough, they don't have strong enough individuality. Feed them a bunch of fruit, right? Different foods have different effects on people. And when somebody is eating, for example, food that's been death, pain, fire, and destruction, then they start to be negative and they start to be paranoid and they start to have all of that stuff. And they're not really a happy person because what they're eating is not happy. Very related. In fact, this is the, the message probably of my last 27 years of my career is if you eat terrible, you're going to feel terrible. You're going to look terrible. You're going to have terrible results and uh, your life's going to be other than excellent. If you eat well, then you have chances of you're basically stacking the odds in your favor to have an excellent outcome. Okay. So that's kind of how it works. We're always trying to stack up to have an excellent outcome by stacking the odds in our favor. That's what we're doing here. The bowel cleansing, first step, tissue, wring that tissue out, the exercise, the yoga, that kind of stuff, hot cold, that piece. Then now we got to get on the right diet, which always means less. It always means less. It doesn't matter what age you are. The best food for you is less food. Um, we there's, I mean, I, you can't, I can't believe how little I eat now compared to what I ate, say 10 years ago. That's another thing with age. You can't get away with it anymore. It's crazy. I mean, I eat one meal. I'm like inflamed. It's like, this is just a salad. Like what the heck? But that's just how it is because ultimately when you're constructed, your body's constructed. You're not 18 years old anymore. Maybe some of you are. I hope you are. Geez, if you're 18 years old and you're on this call, that'd be fantastic. I hope you are. But, you know, most of us are 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and we, you just can't get away with it anymore. So we need to learn to go with less. This is a really good way to go with less, by the way. Eat an orange, go another two or three hours. Eat another piece of fruit, go another two or three hours. So you skate along the day with very little calories. And then when you have to have that meal, you know, your body's ready for it. You're hungry, actually. I found with, with doing a lot of cleansing and all this. Almost never am I hungry, really. You know, that's another thing. You probably had similar experiences where, you know, I only get really hungry when I do very, very intense physical work. Even then, it's got to be like four hours of physical work. Let's go to the next step. So the right diet, plant-based diet, organic diet. Get as much of the goodies in as you can and the baddies, keep them out. You know what those bad things are. You know the stuff that inflames you up. You know the stuff that irritates your system. Having a stomach ache, by the way, is really a downer. It's really a downer. A stomach ache is the worst thing ever. I mean, I, I never have a stomach ache. And by the way, the instant cure to the stomach ache is activated charcoal. So that brings us to step four, which is the right supplementation, herbal strategy, and herbalism in general. As you age and as time goes on, see in the beginning, it's, oh, medicine is your food. Or sorry, food is your medicine. Right? What's the phrase? It goes, let food be your medicine, but it's also another part. And let medicine be your food. It's both. Let me say that again, right? What's the famous dictum? Let food be your medicine and let medicine be your food. It's both. They're both together. What does that mean? Let food be your medicine. Okay, I get what that means, right? That makes sense because... I want my food to be my medicine. I want to make sure I have ginger, turmeric, and the things that you like. Or, uh, you know, I love, I'm drinking, this is chaga tea right here. I love that. But ultimately, let medicine be your food means that herbalism has to become a part of your diet. 
That's become a part of your diet. And you start where you, you understand. Like, for example, people are like, you mean oregano? Yeah, but no. You mean rosemary? Yeah, but no. You mean uh, marjoram? Yeah, but no. Those are all great herbs, but they're not tonic herbs. So let's break down the herbalism step four a little bit. One is we could have the right type of supplementation in there and the right types of um, nutriment to break, to get the heavy metals out. So that's step one, actually. And one of the most important things to detoxify for heavy metals, if you're doing all the other steps, is just simple activated charcoal, activated coconut charcoal. Activated coconut charcoal is the safest, simplest detoxification substance in the world. It's so safe that you can give to children. It's so safe you can give to newborn babies. It's so safe you can give to grandma who's 90, any age. And that's why I love it so much is because it's kind of a universal medicine. It's a universe. It's very simple. And it's just charcoal. Why is charcoal so important? Well, charcoal just symbolically represents transformation, right? It's transformed to wood. It symbolically represents transformation. In the Icelandic sagas, they have an interesting archetype, and it's called the coal biter. The coal biter is the child in the family in the Arctic up there in Iceland and in Scandinavia where it's freezing. Everybody's like sleep and terrible weather every day, gnarly, intense winters. There's always a child in the family. It's like the runt of the litter. It's like, I, I'm not going out there. It's freezing out there. I'm not going to go out there and herd the sheep. It's freezing. I'm not getting on that boat and going fishing. It's freezing out there. Wind, rain, sleet, snow, ice, etc. So that person, that child was given the job of tending the home fire, right? Because you always had a fire burning in the house, keep things warm. So when people came in from whatever they were doing, gathering, fishing, whatever the survival strategies were back then, getting lumber, collecting stuff on the beach to survive on. And whenever they got back home, they'd want a warm house. So that kid from age seven to 14 would tend the home fire and would consume at the, this is in Scandinavian mythology, this is in the Icelandic sagas, would consume bits of charcoal, usually birch and willow charcoal, at the edge of that fire. And that birch and willow charcoal would eventually transform that child. In fact, send that child through a startling metamorphosis. And that child would become the most important person in the family because they would become the toughest. They could handle the wind, rain, sleet, snow, ice better than anybody. They would be able to get up early and get out early and get back late. That person was called the coal biter or the coal eater or the charcoal eater. This is in Scandinavian mythology. No kidding. And that means that if you think you're, oh, I'm not strong enough. I'm too weak. Oh my God, I've got heavy metal poisoning. What am I going to do? Charcoal can transform your life, absolutely transform your life. And it's my favorite actual personal supplement. And I finally just got home. So I'm actually glad to be back with it because I was out of it on my travels and I run out of it quick because I'm not only consuming it myself, I'll start out with 500 milligrams a day and then do more. I Sometimes I'll do 2,500 milligrams a day. I don't recommend you do that. Um, you got to start out small, start with 500 milligrams. Um, with, with kids, 250 milligrams, but you can put it into water. You can put it into lemonade. It has no taste, so it can go into anything. Um, you got a, a baby with that's colicky. Put a little bit of charcoal in the water and have the baby drink it. It's amazing like that. So as you get it into your body, what ends up happening is you start to find out that it's a it's a consistency question. Like, do are you doing it every day? Because if you are over long periods of time, months you will eventually cause the draw, the pull, boom, 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 to get the metals out of your system in a way that's easy and gentle, rather than going through some crazy thing, like I'm gonna do this heavy metal detox, I'm gonna get injected with DMSP and DMSA and do these sulfur things and do this other stuff and hot colds and all that other stuff. Not that that's bad, but you know, everyday life, like we're being exposed to heavy metals every day and we're just driving down the road and breathing in brake dust it's all over the place. So we have to have a daily system to detoxify. And that's where the activated charcoal comes in. Usually in the morning, that works best for me. You could also do it at night. Now, if you're on medication, let's say you're on thyroid medication, you can't do activated charcoal at the same time as the medication because the charcoal will neutralize the medication. 
Hospitals recommend two hours apart. So let's say you're on thyroid medication, you take your thyroid medication, hospitals say two hours. I recommend four hours because there are certain circumstances where the you know you're you're running around, you're sitting or something, and the charcoal really doesn't digest until three or four hours later. So you may want to wait four hours before having the medication. Or let's say you're doing consistently your thyroid medication in the morning, you're going to consistently do the charcoal at night. And actually, it's going to make your medication work better if you do both in the same day because there's a lot of byproducts to any medication that are toxic to the body. And we need to clean it up. And the way that charcoal does that is it filters it off through your through a process called interstitial dialysis. That's the name of it. Isn't that an interesting term? Interstitial dialysis. What does that mean? It means that charcoal, as it's being digested through your system, acts as a filter. It acts as an extra filter. I mean, your kidneys are a filter. Your liver is a filter. Your spleen is a filter. They're all filled. All these detox organs are all filters. How about having an extra filter? You can have one, and it's called charcoal. So I try to get that extra filtration mechanism in there. It, it helps with autophagy, which means it helps with the detox process. So if you're fasting on water and you take charcoal, there's no calories in charcoal. There's nothing that's going to stimulate any blood sugar whatsoever, but it does accentuate and accelerate autophagy. So if you're in a water fast, you've been in for days and you're like, I want to accelerate it. Now it's been four days. What can I do to help get more out or detoxify better? You can put in the, the activated charcoal at that time, or you could just have it in as part of your daily routine. I recommend daily routine. Charcoal is a tonic substance. And in this category, this fourth category, I do want to mention that there are tonic substances. What does that mean? That's things you can do daily. Now, you can't do oregano daily. You can't do onions daily. You can't do garlic daily. Finally, your body's going to go, we've had enough. We're good. That's a, we're good. You know, do something different. Or your friends, colleagues, loved ones are going to say, dude, you have a, I have too much garlic. Like, stop. Right? Because those are not tonic substances. But activated charcoal is a tonic substance. Chaga tea is a tonic substance. Rishi mushroom is a tonic substance, and there's many of them out there. We call this, look, before we get it too far into this, we have that supplement regime, which is really, I think, activated charcoal is the most important. Mm -hmm.